Awesome. What I want you to do is highlight that last sentence in question number five. I am his own and want to live for him. Question, go to the top of page uh, six. And then question number six. So we've been talking about all this, about how Jesus suffered and how God created the heavens and the earth, how the Holy Spirit comes to us. How do we know that? Where do we learn that? What wonderful book do we learn about Jesus? All right, say it with me. The Bible. God's Word. In fact, if you turn to page 46, oh, a lot of sixes right here. Six in the workbook, question number six. Page 46. Where do we learn about Jesus? God's truth about Jesus is made to known to us in the Bible and its central message. We call this truth the gospel, namely the promise of the forgiveness of sins for Jesus' sake. Or what Bible passage would go with that? John 3, what? 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. Gave his son for you and for me so that we can have eternal life. That's where we learn that. In the Bible. And you see the Bible passages there. I want you on question number 6. I want you... It's, quite, it's number 19, John 20, verse 31. I want you to take your highlighter out and highlight John 30, or sorry, John 20, verse 31. But these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. These things are written, meaning in the Bible, the scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament. John 20, verse 31. If you have a catechism, or you can mark it in your book too. It's question number 6, verse number 19. All right. What is the Bible? Look at question number 7 for the answer to this. I want you to take about 3 minutes and answer those 1, 2, 3. They're all found in question number 7 in your catechism. So take about 3 minutes answer how long did it take to write the Bible, who exactly wrote the Bible, why is the Bible reliable for Christian, for Christian life and faith.
Well, how long did it take to write the Bible? Over a thousand years, closer to 1,500 years. Uh, we believe that Moses wrote uh, Genesis through Deuteronomy about 1440 B.C., uh, thereabouts. And we believe that John the Apostle wrote the book of Revelation around 100 A.D. So around these 1,500 years uh, that the Bible was put together. We got, uh, in the Old Testament, you get Moses writing some stuff. You got David writing Psalms. Uh, you got uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all those prophets. And then we have in the Gospels, what do the four Gospels say them with me? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, and so you have the four Gospel writers. Luke writes Acts. Uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, writes the majority of the rest of the Old, uh, New Testament letters. We have letters from, from uh, uh, Peter as well. And then John writes some of them as well. And so we have all of this together. Now, who is the author of the Scriptures of the Bible? Which person of, of the Trinity? Who do we say? God himself gave writers and thoughts to do that. But it was through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit led these people to write these words. He, in what we call, inspired them. That they would write it down. Now, some of them actually wrote down the words. Like Paul's letters, he wrote them out. Or he had someone... Uh, take his dictation, uh, the gospel writers wrote them out, or uh, they could be like in uh, uh, the Old Testament that they, like Jeremiah, said the words, and then other people wrote them down. So we call that, that verbal inspiration. Uh, we also say they are infallible. They are <coughs> incapable of error. Now, if there is an error in the Bible, usually it, did, it doesn't come from God, it's from us um, copying it and, and, and uh, uh, translating it into our languages. So we can totally rely that what the Bible said is true, is true. Um, there are, as of today, about 35 manuscripts of the New Testament, uh, which means uh, they're either complete, um, um, the complete Gospels or the letters or their partials um, that you know that people have found, um, but there are thirty-five thousand of these, so that we're pretty. We could be ninety-nine point nine 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 percent for sure that when Jesus said John three sixteen, Jesus said John three sixteen. Um, the next closest old time document. Uh, has about 850 manuscripts, and that's the uh, some of the Homer Homer stuff. Um, and so we're when the Bible when we read what the Bible says, we're 99 percent sure that that's how it happened. Now, in some of these manuscripts, um, there are what happens is, in, and you do this all the time, I do this all the time. Uh, let's just say at one time uh, they said there were 12 apostles, but then the next one it says there were 21. Well, what happened? Someone accidentally inverted the numbers. Now, 10,000 manuscripts says 12. One says 21. That means somebody made a mistake. Um, and so we say, oh, we'll just we'll go with the bigger number. We'll go with the, the most manuscripts. So we can totally rely in what the Bible says um, and, uh, uh, and, and trust in that. So it's incapable of errors. It also... Uh, it doesn't. It's inerrant, so it doesn't make. It doesn't have any mistakes. Now we might make mistakes in translating it. Uh, in fact, I know we do because sometimes when you go from one language to another, sometimes going from one language to the other, you can't find words in that new language. So we kind of make things up to make it make sense. But in reality, you need that. Like the example in Genesis chapter one, we read in the beginning God. Now, in our English translation, you would think, oh, God, that's one person. But in Hebrew, that's a plural noun. You've got to read your Old Testament Hebrew. Bring your Old Testament uh, Hebrew Bibles next week. <laughs> and your New Testament Greek, and we'll go through that. But that's why, as pastors, we learn all of that, so that we know what that says. Our English translations do a wonderful job of that. But every once in a while, we've got to pull out what the original languages say, said, and so that we know what it's talking about. So we can trust what the Bible is all about. 
Why can we be confident that the Bible is the Word of God? Well, many people want to say that Christians are foolish in believing God's Word uh, uh, and for believing that God's Word is true. When we read the words of Jesus recorded in the Bible, we see that Jesus himself taught that God's Word is true. Read question number eight. I'm gonna, this is so important, I want to go through this uh, with you. Why can we be confident that the Bible is authoritative and inerrant? In the Gospel, the central message of the Bible, God promises his new life on the basis of the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. God promises alone creates faith in Jesus. Jesus himself, whom we trust, declares that all the scriptures are God's own words, completely dependable in all they teach and without error. A. Jesus uses the Old Testament scripture as God's word. He continually affirms the scriptures as authoritative, meaning it possesses authority, and with phrases such as, it is written, or have you not read. He assures us that the scripture cannot be broken. In other words, it doesn't contain errors. It doesn't make mistakes. Jesus B. Jesus claims that those same authority for himself, saying, for example, I say to you, or truly, truly, I say to you, um, claiming that it, these words are, are words of spirit and life. And just as God called and authorized the prophets in the Old Testament and put his words in their mouths and fulfilled their prophecies, so also Jesus called and authorized his apostolic witnesses to speak <coughs> his word, guided by his spirit, the sent one, the apostles. And we are recipients of that. Take out your, your uh, highlighter again, and I want you to highlight the note on bottom of page 47. We believe the Word of God has the power in itself to convince the reader or hearer of its authority, because it is God's Word. It's self-authenticating. The Word of God does what it says, as it says in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. Get your Bibles out. And turn to Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. Isaiah, Old Testament. If you go in the middle of the book, there's Psalms. Go to the right there. You will find Isaiah. And chapter 55 is right after chapter 54. 55, verses 10 and 11. <clears throat> For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. So God's word does what it says it's going to do. Obviously, we're going to be talking about a little bit more what that means for you and for me. But God's Word is authoritative. Now, in that little box, in the middle of page um, 6, it says, pick out one of the three examples of how Jesus declared all Scripture is God's Word. I want you to pick one of those out, and in your own words, write what that means for you. Jesus used the Old Testament. Jesus claims authority for himself. Jesus called the authority of the prophets of the Old Testament the apostles. And then bottom of page 6, from Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11, I want, it says, what word sticks out to you, or what phrase that we read? 
Just like the water comes down and waters the ground, so does God's Word. What does it do? What sticks out to you? God's Word comes to you. It does what it says. I'm kind of give you the answer here. So. All right, we're going to stop here for now. I don't to get through the chat, but it's all right. We'll finish. We'll uh, continue that next week. For this week, I want you to review what we went through. Even though we didn't do questions 9 through 14, I still want you to read that in the catechism. So today, name things, three things you learned from class uh, and the sermon, and then questions 1 through 14. All right, any questions on that? Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you next Sunday. I've heard of some of you, in case it helps anybody. What did she do?